Welcome back. So uh, today I'm going to briefly discuss improvising over a modal setting. Um, I think one of the big challenges um, people face when they begin improvising in a modal setting is coming up with ideas um, that aren't just limited to say the one uh, tonal key center. Um, you know, if you're playing on a tune that's F minor, for example, um, if you're just playing F Dorian scale, uh, pretty quickly things can get tedious. Um, so, one thing that the great improvisers um, in, on, on modal settings do is that they create tension. Now, tension needn't just be harmonic um, tension. You can also create tension using uh, rhythmic devices, tonal devices, um, you know, phrase shapes, etc. But today I will um, just be discussing um, some beginnings to harmonic ideas you can use to get you out of the one key center when you play. Um, so creating tension in a harmonic situation um, can be done by using the, the one basic kind of premise for uh, creating tension in pretty much all music, um, which is using the dominant chord of uh, the fifth, the five dominant chord. So for example, if you're in F minor, uh, playing ideas that outline the sound of a C7, uh, C seventh chord, you can create the feeling of tension across that F minor sound. Um, you know, generally speaking, um, when we're talking about playing standards and things like that within uh, the jazz repertoire, the harmony is directed, um, or the tension is directed by the harmony. Okay, so for instance, there's a two-five-one. Uh, there's a there's a modulation into a different key area, and generally speaking, the soloist follows that plan. So the tension is being provided by the rhythm section with the soloist generally following. Okay, there's a lot of great improvisers that don't abide by that, but that's the general premise. Um, but when it comes to modal, the modal situation, really the soloist um, begins to take the lead in, in determining where the tension lies and how long it lasts for. Um, if you listen to great modal players like you know, John Coltrane, Wayne Shorter, Miles Davis, um, McCoy Tyner, Herbie Hancock, and so forth, there's a lot going on, uh, both melodically and harmonically. So let's um, just talk about the first, what I think is a good first step anyway, in terms of getting some extra colour into your lines when you're playing in this situation, and that's by incorporating the five chord. Um, so you can start out with just a simple exercise uh, by, say, playing one bar of the key area, let's say again F minor, one bar of F minor, and then through your melodic ideas you outline the sound of C7. Now, when you do uh, incorporate these C7 ideas, you really want to look for the notes that are going to rub a little against the chord you're on. Because if we're just playing, if we're still playing the same notes that fit in uh, in the F minor chord, then you're not really creating any tension. So we might want to start by, I mean you could start simply by just looking at the uh, dominant 7 flat 9 um, arpeggio. Okay. <laughs> A lot of these devices come straight out of classical music, so we're just stealing them and, uh, dare I say, making them a little hipper at times, hopefully. Um, so that can be the beginning exercise. So let me um, show you an example of that over, over um, an F minor modal setting. And I'll just be playing one bar of F minor and one bar of C7 ideas.
Okay, so hopefully there you could hear the flow between the resolution points and the tension points. Um, I really pretty much limited it to uh, dominant 7 flat 9 arpeggio of the 5 chord. Um, but then, you know, you can take this to another step by incorporating a few more colours outside of the diatonic key area. So if we now think um, in terms of using an altered scale off the 5 chord. Now I know some people like to think more in a harmonic um, idea than a, a scale type idea. So let, let's think about this then in terms of being say the tritone dominant chord. Tritone substituting the dominant um, 5 chord. So in this instance we we'll be playing an F sharp, let's say Lydian dominant, okay, which is the standard, um, uh, you know, standard scale that's used over a tritone dominant chord, but thinking of F sharp 7, sharp 11. Um, so now what happens is we begin to incorporate a few more notes that are outside of the diatonic key area. So for example, if we're playing uh, if we're playing the, let, let's say C altered scale, right? We'll be using the flat 13, uh, the flat 9, uh, and look, I guess they're the main two outside of the, the diatonic key area when we're talking about F minor. Um, so once again, this will give you a, a richer um, kind of color palette to draw from when you're creating this tension. So let's have a listen to that now. So hopefully you could hear then that by using the, uh, an extra couple of notes outside of the diatonic key area, the level of tension had broadened. Um, you know, there, was, there were some richer colours in there that created, you know, a deeper level of tension within the harmonic line, which then, I guess, uh, you know, leads to a, at times more satisfying resolution. Um, so that's only step one, right? You know, looking at the colour you can use um, and then applying it in a one bar to one bar setting. But as I said um, before, the soloist now becomes responsible not only for creating the tension, but placing the tension. So you can, um, you know, can experiment with where you are placing these tension devices. Even just turning, turning it around the other way and playing 5151 one, rather than 1515 one, um, changes the feeling of your lines um, altogether. Let's look at another example now where I'll play um, one bar of the tonic chord and two bars of the five chord leading back to one bar resolution. So over a four bar setting we have resolution, tension, tension, resolution. Okay, so you could probably hear then that the melody sounded completely different once again, and this was due to um, the placement of the tension within the line and the fact that the tension was held for an extra bar this time. Um, this is something you can really go forward and um, experiment with um, within your own lines. The masters of modal improvisation really have complete control of the tension. Um, you know, at times someone like John Coltrane can hold the tension within the 
um, one key area for anywhere up to you know 32 bars or more, um, and then he and you know Elvin Jones slam into a resolution point in the next top of the form, and it's uh, you know it's a really kind of rewarding musical experience. So um, there's plenty there to work with. Um, I hope it helps you out when it comes to improvising in a modal setting. I know it did for me. As soon as I worked out that it wasn't just about you know staying in the one key area and trying to come up with different ideas um, in that situation, I, I know this really helped me. So good luck, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.